huge bump. Bottomed out a little bit there. Look at this jump. I couldn't resist. What's going on guys? Alex here with TFL Bike and right here is a pretty cool machine. This is Honda's new ADV 150. Looks like an Africa Twin, but it's got the motor and frame and design of a scooter. So we're gonna be going into a full review. Now I actually started this review already and uh, going with the classic scooter theme, I didn't wear any gear besides a helmet, uh, but no gloves, no riding uh, jacket, no pants, no riding boots or anything like that. And uh, I paid the price for that. A lot of times I forget how easy it is to ride a scooter. <sighs> Let's see how it held up. Shoot, um, LED turn signal. Looks like it snapped off. The wire's still connected. A little bit of scuffing right here. A little bit of scuffing and a crack right there. And uh, over there as well. Uh, and it looks like the side stand or the center stand kind of punched into the engine case a little. So. Big bummer. Sorry Honda, at least I caught it on camera. Yeah, so did a little bit of damage to the bike, just a little bit of scuffing and we fixed that turn signal with some super glue. It's good to go now, but today I brought all my riding gear. Now I can do a full in-depth proper review of this. I say it all the time off camera. I should say it now on camera for all you guys listening. There's so many sayings, dress for the slide, not the ride. All the gear all the time, ATG, ATT. There's so many of those sayings and I usually follow that rule. I ride track, I ride street, I ride in the canyons, I commute to work. I never go out without leathers on. This was the first time I did it in years and uh, yeah, that's what happened. So I'm being safe today as you should. Let's get into the full review. All right, so the ADV 150 does have this keyless key fob. So all you do is keep that in your pocket um, the bike does still have a steering lock, so it's locked right now. I was curious about that. It does still have it, but all you do is walk up, push the ignition in, and turn it to off. Now the steering's unlocked. There's also a seat fuel position uh, for popping the seat or getting to your fuel filler right there, and then the on position. So that's where we want to be. Super easy to get on the bike because of this large cut through right here. Classic scooter design. Get my gloves on here to start the bike. Kick stand up, you do have to hold the rear brake, and there we go, we're good. So, uh, no gears to shift through, just twist and go, let's do this. All right, so first thing I noticed about this bike is how easy it is to ride. It's crazy easy. It's very comfortable, uh, the seat's super padded. It kind of hugs your butt into the back of the seat so you don't slide around too much. Uh, you don't really get to pick where you sit on the seat, which, I'm not a huge fan of, but for people who don't know how to sit on a motorcycle and you know really adjust your body positioning, it makes it easy. So I can see why Honda did that. Uh, good brake feel coming up to a stop and the bike just really tips in. It's so easy to turn. This bike is 298 pounds wet, 31 and a half inch seat height. Uh, so it's really confidence inspiring. I, sure there's some bikes with some lower seat heights, but most people should be able to get their feet down on the ground pretty flat with this. You can feel the weight while you're riding it around. You can also feel the small tires because it's really, really flickable. I mean, this really wants to lean over. Up here, we have a fully digital cluster. I really like how that looks. Uh, it's kind of got this white on black appearance to it. I think it looks really cool, but with sunglasses and a visor, uh, it's just a little bit hard to see in the day. Uh, so I wish that was a little bit brighter. Not the end of the world though. It gives you lots of information up there real big speed uh instant fuel economy total mileage um you can scroll through and get air temp and battery voltage and average fuel economy everything like that so plenty of features up there in the cluster i'll give you a little idea here of why the weight of this bike is so awesome uh, just pulling into this parking lot real quick it is so easy to do low speed maneuvers on this bike. I mean, I'm gonna go down to like two miles per hour and even just doing this low speed turn, that would be really hard to do that tight on a big motorcycle. But on this, no problem. And that's exactly what you want in the city is something super maneuverable that, you know, you don't stress out about. And that's exactly what this is. But at the same time, it's got plenty of power. 
I was able to take this up to 67 miles an hour uh, on the highway. It got me 20 miles from the office to home, no problems. I was keeping up with traffic. I was passing traffic, actually. Coming up this hill right here, holds its own, no problem. It's a pretty powerful scooter for what it is. I really don't feel like it needs more. The one thing I will say is that areas like this where you know you have a lot of open area and lots of high wind, it does kind of push you around a little bit. But that's to be expected on just about any motorcycle, not just a scooter, but you notice it probably a little bit more on something this small. I know I said this at the beginning of the video, but style-wise, it kind of does look like a mini Africa Twin, and that's what Honda was really going for here. This scooter is based off of the PCX150, which has been around for a while. That's Honda's kind of city slicker scooter. Uh, this one is based on that. It's $600 more, shares the same frame, the same engine, um, but this appeals to a much younger crowd. That PCX150, to be completely honest, it's ugly. Even if I lived in a city, uh, like New York City, somewhere where it really makes sense to have a scooter, there's no way I'd go for that PCX. This though, I'd consider, I think it looks way younger, honestly, and uh, should appeal to people like me who want that more sporty, aggressive off-road look. So what powers the ADV150? Well, it's the same exact motor out of the PCX150. So 149cc, liquid-cooled, four-stroke, single-cylinder, and that's matched to an automatic CVT, and it's belt-driven. All the suspension components on the ADV150 come from Showa. So up front, you have a 31 millimeter fork uh, with 5.1 inches of suspension travel. That's class leading. And then if we come around to the back, this is where it gets really cool. You have two Showa rear shocks with remote piggyback reservoirs and triple rate springs, and you get 4.7 inches of suspension travel out back. So super cool setup, and uh, you're definitely gonna get some comments on these piggyback reservoirs just riding around. So let's talk about brakes. Up front you have a single 240 millimeter disc and if you look in the center here at this ring this bike actually has ABS and that's super cool. I think a lot of people buying this machine and people just riding it it's pretty likely it's going to be their first motorcycle or first two-wheeled machine. So pretty cool that they give you ABS. That's definitely going to give you a lot of confidence and keep you safer on the road. Funny thing though the rear wheel has a drum brake so no ABS on that. I kind of thought that was funny. It makes it pretty fun to skid to a stop or skid the rear tire out around turns. Um, and that's kind of a feature you'd expect to find on higher end adventure bikes like the Africa Twin. It's more of an accident here, but still pretty cool. Wheels and tires, what are we playing with here? So up front we have a 14 inch wheel with a trail winter tire. Out back a 13 inch wheel with the same kind of trail winter tire. Uh, the tread on these is not bad. Uh, it's definitely not a dirt bike knobby tire, uh, but it's about as aggressive as you're gonna get on a scooter. All right guys, I cannot talk about an ADV scooter without hitting some dirt. So here we go. Got a little bit of not so well traveled road here. It's really bumpy and uh, there's plenty of suspension travel. So it's soaking it up real nice. Not getting bounced off the seat at all, which is impressive. Huge bump, bottomed out a little bit there. But yeah, the suspension's got enough travel in it that I don't really get thrown out of the seat. Sure, it's not crazy comfortable, but I'm not getting ejected. A little bit of a bump. Ooh, got a little bit of air there. Another one. It jumps, guys. It definitely jumps. So yeah, this is about as aggressive as I'd want to get with this thing. But it's fun. I mean... Go and explore a little dirt road after work before you head out of the out of town it can do it and do it pretty well it's a little weird standing on a platform floor instead of foot pegs but it's doable it's definitely doable <laughs> lots of fun This is very adventure bikey. This is a uh, adjustable windscreen, two positions. So you've got these little knobs that pull out and then you can lower down into place. Just two positions. Um, 
But yeah, there you go. I really didn't notice too much of a difference between the two positions. I like having the windscreen, um, but in both the high and the low position, I felt like it was doing a really good job of keeping the wind off my chest, keeping my head in the wind. That's how I like to ride. I don't like when I'm kind of enclosed in a bubble of air. I like to feel all that wind come into my helmet, but not so much my chest. And I think this windscreen does a good job of that. Another thing I really like about the ADV 150 is it's all LED. So you have an LED headlight, LED running lights up front, an LED tail light and brake light, and most importantly in my mind is full LED turn signals. These are actually kind of hard for Honda to get past and get all the regulations for here in the US, but they went out of their way and did that. That's just one less thing I'd have to change aftermarket if I own this bike. Even in the turns, it feels really stable. I don't feel like I'm gonna slip out or anything. You can really get some lean angle on this and carry some speed through the corners and have fun doing it. Um, it's not a performance machine, but it's still fun to carry some speed through the corners in it. All right, here's a good test. We're merging onto the highway and um, I'm just going to pin it. 55 mile an hour speed limit here. I don't know if I have the power to get in front of this van. It looks like I do. Accidentally hit the horn. Um, but yeah, we're going 51, 52, 53, 54. So it can handle highway speeds. I'm keeping up with traffic. It might not get you out of a sticky situation, but I don't expect it to. It is very impressive though that I can take the highway home from work. Scooters are super utilitarian. You can do a lot with them and that's what makes them so cool. Uh, there's a lot of storage on this bike under the seat. So you actually, to get there, have to flip the ignition into the seat fuel position and then you can use the switch right here to pop the seat and then it unlatches and you can lift it up. You get a massive amount of storage in here. I've been able to shove a uh, half helmet in here, a backpack full of, you know, lunch and all kinds of stuff. Right now I don't have much in here, just uh, an extra GoPro, the owner's manual. Um, this is where the battery lives, down behind this door right here, so access to that if you need it. Um, but yeah, overall just lots of storage, which is great for a scooter and uh, really beefy passenger seat as well with these nice big grab handles and really wide foot pegs down here as well that have a really satisfying kind of click into place. So um, even if your passenger's never been on a bike before, they should be pretty comfortable on this. The seat's big enough, you have a really good place to hold on to and good foot pegs. So all around usability and utility, very good. So guys, as I'm editing this, I realized I forgot to mention one little storage cubby on the ADV 150, so let's take a look. It's right here up on the left side, just this little storage cubby right here. It does have a weather seal on it, so it will keep some water and dust out. Uh, it's big enough to fit smaller items like an iPhone or the key fob for the bike, uh, and there is a little 12 volt outlet in there. I don't know why they didn't just put a USB port inside of this though. If you look down here, all the controls are pretty basic on this bike. The one thing that's a little bit different between this and most motorcycles is this little lever right here. That's actually a parking brake. So this is your rear brake. You pull in on that lever and it holds the rear brake closed. Um, this bike doesn't have any real gears, so you can't leave it in gear to prevent it from rolling down a hill. That's how you get it to stay on a hill. Now I've put about 80 miles on this bike since Honda dropped it off to us and I reset the uh, fuel consumption when I first got it and riding it around in those 80 miles I'm getting about 87.6 miles to the gallon which is really good. Uh, it's got a 2.1 gallon tank so you know do the math about 160 ish 170 miles of range somewhere in there. Uh, and I think that's pretty impressive for a machine like this that's probably not going to go on many long journeys. You know, you might hop on this for two or three miles at a time. So that's very decent range in my book. Yeah, I mean, overall, it's a good feeling machine. You twist the throttle, it goes. It's got a pretty classic Honda sound to it, exactly what I'd expect from a scooter. Uh, the belt has a good feeling, even though it's a CVT. Um, you know, it doesn't feel like it lunges or anything or jerks you around. It's got a really smooth feeling to it. You know, even if I'm really choppy with the throttle, completely off, completely on, completely off, it's smooth, smooth, smooth. So um, nothing to worry about there. All in all, just a really fun bike. Perfect for cities. If I still lived in Boulder, like downtown in Boulder and was riding a mile or two to work every day, I'd own one of these, no doubt about it. 
it's fun. I was able to get some air time on it. Um, it's lightweight, it's super practical. It can carry, you know, lunch under the seat. It can carry a passenger. It can carry a spare helmet for a passenger. Just extremely practical, extremely easy to ride, extremely comfortable, and 4,300 bucks. So $600 more than the PCX 150 for a much sportier, aggressive looking Africa twin style machine. I like it. I'm impressed. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below, but this is a really fun scooter. There you go, guys. The Honda ADV 150, a pretty cool adventure styled scooter. I had a lot of fun with this bike. Uh, what are my final thoughts on it? It rides really well, and honestly, scooters are just super practical. I used to have a Honda Ruckus back in college, and man, do I miss that thing. It was just perfect for getting around town, running errands, getting groceries, just doing little things like that. And this is no different. This is just as perfect, uh, but it's got more speed and can actually get me home to my house 20 miles from the office, so that's really cool. Uh, is it worth $600 over the PCX 150? It's really up to you. Uh, it's really a styling pack in my mind. Sure, the suspension's a little better, but you're really not going to be taking this thing off-road. So if I were in the market for a scooter, yes, I'd say the $600 is worth it for it to look cool and put a smile on my face when I walk up to it. But that's a decision you're going to have to make for yourself. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out all our other videos at TFL Bike and the rest of TFL Studios, Car, Truck, Off-Road, Classics, Now Talk. We have tons of channels. Go check them all out. See you guys in the next one.